College Gym Fits fan going live on YouTube. This is another full gymnastics meet taped off a, I mean, it actually wasn't taped. It was streamed off ESPN3, Ball State versus, Mich versus Eastern Michigan. It was on Thursday, 124, 2019. Okay, I'll hit the play button. This is Dell Cinema Technology, enhanced with CinemaStream for less buffering and smoother streaming. <laughs> cinema Sound for audio up to 60% louder with 260% more perceived bass. <laughs> and Cinema Color with Dolby Vision to bring your entertainment to life with ultra vivid colors and stunning contrast. Experience the incredible color, sound, and streaming of Dell Cinema. Shop the biggest President's Day ever at Dell.com. This is the all-new Chevy Silverado. It's beautiful. Beefy and mean looking. It's the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. But that's not all. <laughs> the Silverado has more cargo volume than... Next customer. Anyone? Any... Front pike and a half. Just like Rachel Slocum, who was... From Florida. So dynamic. Before she went to Florida, was here in Eastern Michigan. That's exactly right. And that's why Arden became a huge fan of hers, diehard Eastern Michigan fan, bleeds green and white. Hop over to Ball State. Well, they will start on bars. This is Sandra Elsnick, and we've done golf live to you. 
We said in the open, Ball State would have two freshmen competing all around today. Elswick, a late scratch from the Bolt lineup, but she does get going leading off our ball. She served in her major elite elements here, and she's lining line up for her good mount to come. She does a full out dismount. She had a stuck landing on that as well. That's a higher level difficulty dismount. Um, that was good for her to get that stick at the end of the routine as well. Sticks are valuable. They add up after a while. You don't think about that. Do yes, they absolutely do. One small movement of the foot can add up at the end of the knee to several tenths. Back to ball. All around, Jana Rondo. Sophomore out of Minnesota. All around her as a freshman, too. Head coach Katie Minnesota called it. Big time. Very nice. She did a laid out your Chico pull, a little bit of chest down on the landing, which caused her to take that step forward. There should be a small deduction for that. Good second, second vault for the Eagles there. Statistically, Eastern Michigan has been best on vault this year. 24th in the country through two weekends. Katie says she thinks Beam is probably their best overall. They just haven't shown it yet. So that will be one put it together in, the, in a meet for them yet. Yes. Hopefully tonight will be the night for Eastern. Sophomore Arden Hudson will be next up on bars for Ball State. And the first thing you notice about Arden Hudson, she is about as tall as tall can be for a gymnast. For a gymnast yes. And that helps her on an event like this. It does. It's, she has that long, lean um, look to her gymnastics. Too much and that's the illusion to do the Olympics, of course. So it, she just flies on bars, and it's a unique appearance when she's that tall, especially between the, the two rails like that. It's a beautiful toe point as well. She's going to pull her right in her dismount here, a double tuck. Uh, hop on the dismount, that might be about a two tenth deduction. Typically, they gauge upon the shoulder width of the gymnast, so. Shoulder width or less would be one tenth. Anything larger than that could get up to two or potentially three, depending on how large they move their feet. So don't be broad shoulder. That's right. And we're going to products the second all around there for Eastern Michigan. Much more than in a vault there. She has a lot of height and power to that. Vault took a step of the hop backwards, actually. But lands with the chest nice up and up nice and tall. Ball State on bars. You mentioned how good vault has been for Eastern Michigan. Bars has been, along with floor, which is traditional, has been their bread and butter. They come in ranked 35th nationally on bars. And this is Maddie McDonald, the junior out of Oldie, Pennsylvania. So Ball State thus far has gotten onto the apparatus three different ways. Maddie here is going to jump over the low bar and get onto the high bar. Um, it depends upon what style of gymnastics the, the person is able to do on bars as to where they, what, what bar they want to start on. But here, Maddie goes across the low bar and up to the high. Is there a favorite? Per gymnast, there could be, yes. These are two major releases in a row. Stuff together there, that'll give her some bonus points. On bars, you really want to look for a handstand to fall right at the top of the bar line. Wonderful stick on that dismount there. That was a beautiful double layout. Exactly what you're looking for when you come down. Just contact the ground and describe it. Absolutely. That's the last thing the judges see, so it makes the best impression as well. Megan Holford, one of the veterans of senior. Megan does your cheek go layout half. Unfortunately, she had a fall on that one there. She didn't quite get the rotation enough around to have her shoulders above her hips and heels as she landed. Um, the Yuchiko layout half as well as the Yuchiko pull are actually valued the same. A 9.95 start value, not quite at a 10. But the half is a much more difficult landing to find because it is a blind landing where you cannot see the floor until your feet are really contacted in. The good news for Easter, six turns, five counts. Six gymnasts compete, that's right, and gymnastics are allowed to drop one score. So you have six opportunities to get the five best scores you can put together. Those five total together to your team score on that event. 
because they get a couple more stuff bumps after this, they can drop that bow score there from the ball.
under the lights Absolutely. than there is in a gym. Absolutely, it's a de definitely a much different feel. It's a nice way to get that experience in and kind of feel that pressure situation when it doesn't quite necessarily count for that team total. It would help if I run the right spot. Ball State will have an exhibition on bars. We'll go to the freshman roster. So again, this will not count towards the team total for Ball State. Their scores already been tabulated, but this is another exhibition just to get some experience. Stephanie is in the lineup on balls. Like they're trying to determine the score for Caitlin still. Judges are still trying to tabulate those and just putting the delay on this next exhibition routine. What takes extra time? In this case, I'm assuming it's because she had the fall on her finger. If there's a deduction that's higher than, than three tenths, typically they will not give you the value of this skill if you fall it or didn't complete this skill. Um, so likely what they're discussing is the start value for Caitlin's routine, where to begin the, the judging from. If she did not get all of her bonus, then they'll have to start from, say, a 9-7 versus that 10-0 start value they were hoping for. And again, that's based upon having the fall in the routine where she maybe didn't get all that bonus that she was attempting. So what goes through your mind if you're Stephanie Schweikert right now and you're saying, I just want to get up on the bars? This is definitely a nerve-wracking position to be in when you're just standing and waiting and uncertain as to when you'll actually get the flag raised for you here. But again, this is something that happens pretty regularly. It's not uncommon. So you just have to kind of take a deep breath and there she goes, she's ready. over that low bar. A little bit short of that initial handstand. Nice Jaeger, and again, that connection over the low bar. And so her big three to the Jaeger. Ooh, I love this song, Fountains of Wayne, Stacy's Mom. With the full pirouette into a double back good sound. The double back itself is a little bit lower value, but the good connection bonus of having that full pirouette to start it out as well. And that wraps up rotation one. Eastern Michigan with a 38-7-7-5. It's official score on vaults. We're still waiting for the tabulation on Ball State side for their work on bars. We'll flip things though. Ball State will run down the uh, runway, hit the vault next to the bars for Eastern Michigan. Rotation two. So this is the Eagles next. Cardinals, I guess. So they all stay the Cardinals. This is Dell Cinema Technology, enhanced with Cinema Stream for less buffering and smoother streaming. Cinema Sound for audio up to 60. This is the Eagles are the home meet, are the home team, because this was it's taken It's an interesting dynamic. I mean, we have a very young team. Half of our routines are either from freshmen or from people that didn't compete on those events last year. Uh, they're doing a great job with it. It, it creates some challenges, of course, on, on occasion with the coaches, and we have to kind of stay on our game, making sure that they're keeping their focus where it needs to be. Um, but the upperclassmen are also doing a really good job of making sure to remind them this is what we do as, as a group. And, and it's been actually quite fun. The team just really embraced the, the freshmen. I mean, there's six of them. So um, it's also nerve wrecking because there's freshmen you got to put in the lineup. And you don't know their, the way they do things yet. You know, you're trying to learn them as an athlete. And so, but we're, we're getting there. We've done a lot of good things in the gym. So I'm excited to see uh, we have a new freshman in the lineup today, so I'm pretty excited to see what she does. We welcome you back here inside the Convocation Center. Sarah Sageman, Joel Cadet, glad to have you along with us. What was being a freshman gymnast like back in your days at East Lansing? I actually loved it. Freshman year was probably my highest score that I that I got, but I just competed with, I had no concern. Um, I just kind of went out there and, and did my gymnastics and loved it. I had so much fun my freshman year. Learning experience? For sure, for sure. But I've always been, I had always been more of a team type environment. Anyway, that was what I, what I thrived in as it was. So coming to college is kind of trying to fit. 
Take a look at the lineups here in the second rotation. And we will see some of that youth here for Ball State. Sydney Finke, as a senior, takes over in the two spot. We mentioned Sandra Elsedek, the freshman, was originally slated to go all around. Uh, and she will be a late scratch from the vault lineup. Jordan Penny, the grad student, in the three spot. And we talked about Stephanie uh, Schweiker, who was exhibitioning on bars, as a freshman, holds down the anchor spot on vaults. Eastern on bars. They'll lead off with Sydney Audette, who's new on bars this year. She'd only ever competed on floor in her career until this her senior season. Charlotte Reynolds, you heard Katie Minnesota say we've got a new freshman in the lineup today. Charlotte Reynolds makes her career debut here tonight. She'll be in that two spot on bars. Jada Rondo all around is in the anchor spot, the sophomore. So Easter with a slight lead, a couple of tenths ahead through the first rotation. How much does that head-to-head -head matter? I mean, gymnastics is so much about competing against yourself. But when you're in a dual meet, and it's a conference meet, and the win-loss does matter, and it's not just about your score, do you scoreboard watch? Typically, I was coach, we are coach, if I was a coach, I would say the same. We need to pay no attention to the score that is posted. So you shouldn't really have an awareness of what the other team is scoring. Um, oftentimes, you try to stay centered in yourselves and do the best message that you can. Um, gymnastics is the thing that there are judges. It's also a, something you can't control in terms of what the score actually comes out to be. So you may do the best you can of your life and still not score as high as you had the prior weekend. So most often, you're really not paying attention to what those scores are saying, especially in terms of team totals in comparison. It's the Wizard of Oz. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. That's right, absolutely. That's right. Arden Hudson will lead off on vault for Ball State, and she has a really cool vault as well. This will be a 10 0 start value. Handspring double twist. It's rare, it's old school. Fun fact, actually, the last time I've seen a handspring front double pull like this was actually a, or a, I'm sorry, a club teammate of mine who competed right here at Eastern, and she did this exact same vault. Is that front hand spring, double full twist, that was a beautiful lady that she had. And her height is perfect for that ball. Why is it unique? Why did it go away? And what's cool about having it back? I mean, it takes her club coaches who are a little bit old school to be able to teach that. It's not something that happens a lot. It's kind of fun to get something different. It used to be more commonly done. The front entry type ball is not as, not as done as much on this new type of table. Um, prior years when that was big was when the table was the long, skinny um, horse, more so what Benjamin Mass students than common horse. So it's a lot easier to do on that type of apparatus. To the bars for Eastern Michigan, here's Sydney on deck. Sydney did her overshoot to the low bar. She was gearing it for a dismount here. She does not have a major release in this routine, but she has that E level dismount and nailed the landing. That was a beautiful stick for her. And sometimes it's better to not have a release. If you're just clean, the deductions are worse to miss the release route than to not have it at all. You're absolutely right. And sometimes it's worth that game to not have not have a tight start value, but know that you can do everything in the routine cleanly and get very few deductions on it versus adding that major release if you're seeing a fall or if you can't quite do it with proper execution, then you might as well leave it out. And the safe 9-7 is better than the potential 9-9, nine nine, but That's also right, the potential. The potential for a 9-2. Back to the vault for Ball City. We took her layout pass. Very nice landing. Just a slight shuffle of her foot at the end there. She had her hips a little bit tight as she came around the top of the vault on the flipping portion, but she was able to still find that landing. Ball State will take that, though, because Sydney Vicky, a late insert into the lineup, and when you talk to their coaching staff, their assistant coach, Scott Wilson, says, listen, we're trying to work on little hops as opposed to bounding forward on the vault. So every day is a step forward here. That's right, and it is hard to not move your feet when you're landing a skill like that. So instinct, you want to shuffle your feet a little bit or try to make sure that you're in the right positioning. So you really have to kind of fight and find that those little minute hops can be kind of eliminated as the season moves forward. And now the college debut of Charlotte Reynolds on bars. You said freshman year was fun. How was your very first appearance on Navarrex? Slightly nerve-wracking, I'm sure. And of course, she's going to be stonewalled here a little bit, and they're going to do some 
ugly between the judges, so she's going to have to wait a little bit longer until it's her turn. This is your gymnastics version of icing the kicker? That's right. So I'll be extra time out. Freshman out of Lemonster, Massachusetts. And you can see behind her, her teammates saying, hey, shake it out. <laughs> Vault results for Eastern Michigan. Uh, one fall when Halterin sat down on the landing. They were able to drop that score, though, Joel, which was nice. They didn't have to count that in their team total. So they had a solid rotation there. They probably hoped for a little bit higher scores, but they were they were kind of even across the board. <laughs> Highlight the Gresham stick. So a little bit of that shoulder rotation at the deduction. Menzioni with the ball on the Ginger, and that'll get dropped in the anchor spot. So here now is Charlotte Reynolds, the freshman from Lemonster, Massachusetts. I always like to watch teammates in the background. You can typically tell how the gym is doing based upon the excitement of the gym is behind her. That was beautiful pitch. I mean, that pulled her right to the top of the handstand. And she stuck for dismount. Excellent outing in the first routine for her as an eagle. Welcome to college gymnastics. In for the injured Carly Clark today. And Charlotte Reynolds. Lots of down the two spot. Yeah. Great job for her. There's a difference. Five, she's she's exhibition she before, but it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not. Back hardest, to the vault. Hardest part is managing that pressure when you know it counts. So you don't want to be the one whose score gets dropped. That's you have true. that luxury. But. Very nice that she goes out full. That's quite a bit of power she had there coming off the table. That was definitely the most our full vault that they've had thus far for Ball State. And maybe one of their more powerful gymnast gymnastics? One Gym of their more powerful gymnasts. Absolutely. Linguist classes later. Jordan Penny is the fifth year grad student. <laughs> On bars now, Megan Hulker. We go from someone making her college debut to an old steady year. All around a competitor a year ago. She had a nice distance from the bar. They have to find that good balance between enough distance to catch with straight extended arms and that reduction, but also not miss the bar if you're too far extended. So again, a common thread here. Eastern does quite a few of those full pirouettes and double tuck dismounts. Small hop for her on that dismount, but a good solid routine. And that's a big routine because remember, she fell on bolts. So how do you bounce back? That's one of the kickers of gymnastics. You have to be able to be resilient and to be able to let something go. If it didn't quite go your way, just shake it off and be ready to move on to the next event. There's the freshman. Nice one and a half. Nice check. And just like she was on bars. Okay. I got this. Yes, that I'm was done. very nice. Beautiful vault for her. She had a couple of, she didn't really need to take those steps that she had on that one and a half. I know right now, like we talked about being early in the season too, they're trying to just minimize the big steps. Um, but she really could have stuck that one, I think, if she had if she'd had it in her head for it. How do you do that? What's the difference? It's a mindset, most often. A confidence factor to know that when your feet hit the ground, you're not budging them. Strong toes? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's a lot of practice too. Oftentimes teams will do intentional practice with doing your... Maybe she'll stay on the horse and do the one and a half, just standing off of it so that she can find that landing and make her let not let her feet move on the landing there and then try to apply that into the vault itself. Vault State actually does do a, a rotation. They'll go around the gym and you just jump off various apparatuses or boxes or blocks. Yes. And it seems it seems silly kind of rudimentary, but it does make a big difference when you get into the, the heightened pressure situation. If it becomes second nature, then that makes it more likely to be able to hit it like this situation. The Bronix was lead off on vaults. A little bit shy of the handstand on that overshoot. Gearing up for her dismount. She has a double lay out dismount, which is worth an E. E value skill. Took a small step backwards on that. She let it go a little bit early with 
which caused her knee to take that step backwards. She had to compensate at the end and kind of hike her hips down to get her feet down from landing. And Maddie McDonald. Yeah! There you go, Lou. You took a layout pass. Again, a small hop. These are nice balls for Ball State tonight. They've done a great job finding these landings. They feel good about their balls. They came in, it was statistically speaking one of their worst events, but they'll tell you. They think their scores probably were lower than they should have been the first two weekends of the year, so this will be kind of vindicating for them. Absolutely, and it's apparent that they feel confident in what they're doing. They're loose and relaxed if you watch them here on the end of the runway, and they're doing the powerful ball to show that confidence as well. Arden Hudson and Sidney Finkley are in the books with nine seven fives between them. They still the way to score for Nychek to be posted officially. Bars with Eastern Michigan, and this will be Courtney Diesel. Pretty much underneath the low bar, she kind of gets under and then gets to the high water start. She's looking her right into her overshoot. She gets that connection bonus, so the overshoot didn't necessarily have to land in the handstand. She gets the bonus from the connection between the two. She's up for her double layout as well, and she found the landing. That was beautiful. There's beautiful something. Stretch double layout for her. Just Majestic about a really well done double lap. Pretty fun skill to watch. It's more elegant looking than a lot of other dismounts can be on bars. Not that it's not nerve wracking twisting around in any type of movement, but is there just something about that being in a full extension, two rotations? Yes. Kind of feels like you're flying a little bit. Beautiful height on that little layout pass. It's a little bit off to the side. Shift to the side as much. That can be a deduction depending on what the judges are being about it. Back to Jada Rondo to finish things out in the anchor spot. She just came off a career high match last weekend. She got a 38 9, I believe it was, in the all around. So she's hoping to kind of carry that momentum forward here in this meet this week. She won on floor, she won on bar, she won on vault. First in a couple of seasons to win three events for Eastern Michigan. Katie Conrad did it last in 2017. She's doing it for a big release. Very nice. Good control on that handstand. A little bit of leg separation on the overshoot there. She wrote a deduction for that. She can find a stick on this dismount to put an exclamation point in the routine here. Oh, just barely. She was trying to it as best she could. Another double layout. And we'll see a couple of deductions there, what that does to Jada Rondo. <laughs> Doesn't have a lot of time to think about it. She competes all around, and that's what she likes about all around. Is she's just gonna go get on the next apparatus? Let's go up on the beam. That's done. Next thing I want to think about. Absolutely, it is nice to do all four events for that that same manner where you're continuing to move kind of the whole way through the meet. Um, I always thought the toughest was say if you only competed on floor where you have warmed up before the entire meet started and you do not get to do anything until that very last rotation. And that's kind of a tough spot to be in. So all around is nice in that regard where you're constantly moving the whole time and. Keep your mind off of, off of the concerns throughout the meet there. Well, the person who came up with the rotations was just very shot and put us, and they said, we'll take, we'll take the powerful gymnasts, we'll put them on the ball, if it doesn't go well, we'll make them wait. There you go. To get on the floor to bury it. This is actually for Easter. She's been working hard on getting this routine to be more consistent. Good for her. She got all the way through it. That was great. A good day for Callie Harden after a good 9-7 ball. Again, that was exhibition, but they hit all their bar routines tonight, which is always the goal for them. It's the ever, the never-ending pursuit of that 24 for 24. Absolutely. Day. Absolutely. The beauty of college gymnastics is that, like you said, you do not have to count all six scores, but it's always the goal to get everything that you put out on the floor.
Sing, Eastern Michigan, kicking off Mid-American Conference Gymnastics here tonight from Ypsilanti. We're halfway done. Switch apparatuses. Going to the beam of the floor next. Save $50 through February 18th. Lit lifter on the Mid-American Conference slate, college gymnastics between Ball State and Eastern Michigan here at Ypsilanti. Sarah Sageman, former All-Big Ten gymnast at Michigan State. Joel Gadek, glad to have you along with us, former birthday party gymnast at Parquettes. Very, very high level of difficulty. We are halfway through, though. Bars and Vault are behind us, and Ball State edging ahead after the second rotation. 9675 to Eastern's 96725. Starting Mac White raises the stakes a little bit when we spoke to both head coaches before we got underway. The first two meets were exciting because they were big team, you know, 14 um, meets, but this is a dual meet, so I think that's a little bit different and it's going to be kind of exciting with the pace that we're going to do, but really we're telling them at this point it's just another meet and come in and, and do your gymnastics. I think being in a dual is a little bit different than being in a quad versus a tri. Um, when you're in a quad or a tri, you're going all at the same time, so in, a, in a dual, it's one at a time, and so you get to showcase the athletes a little bit more. Um, and the conference meet is kind of cool because you're going back and forth and it's like you're going head to head. So it's kind of fun. Um, I think it's just really exciting for the girls like just to be back home and, and have a conference meet for someone out at home. It being at home, I think that's part of it too. Just not having to hop on a plane or a bus. Ball State, it's opening weekend of the season not because of weather, but because of mechanical issues, had an 18-hour travel day to go from Indianapolis to Washington, D.C. Eastern Michigan opened up at Pittsburgh and then at Northern Illinois, so it wasn't the same type of travel, but there's something about being on your beam or your floor. That absolutely. Just feels like... Yes, absolutely. When you're at a home, home beat, you're able to rotate in the order of Olympic orders, what we call it. Is that vault to bars to beams and to floor? That's kind of the rotation order that everybody's used to competing in. Uh, it's unique in college where if you're the visiting team at a dual meet, you do kind of the flip flop order of that. So it's unique in the fact that you start on bars and come backwards to vault, where you're used to in your head as a club gymnast kind of going always in that same particular order. So it's kind of nice to have that comfort zone when you're home to have that same rotation order that you're always used to doing. And there's something about not finishing on floor. That's kind of anticlimactic. And look at probably Eastern Michigan's biggest fan, Ella Dover, is in the crowd with us here tonight. A member of the team, you'll actually find her if you go to the Eastern Michigan website and pull up the roster for gymnastics. Ella Dover is part of Team Impact and is on the Eastern Gymnastics squad for her third season. 11 years old, suffers from chronic epilepsy, multiple seizures daily, and this allows her that camaraderie chance to be part of an athletics team when sometimes maybe you wouldn't be able to do that otherwise. And Katie Minnesota's team has done a great job making her feel like a part of them at Thanksgiving at Ella's house, yes. Halloween at Ella's house. It impacts Ella, but it's really cool to talk to the young ladies about how it impacts them too. Talk to Jane Arondo and Emily Dobronix, and they both said, like, it changes your perspective on life. And what a bad day for you is, it's all perspective. It does, absolutely. And being a college gymnast, there's there's nothing like it. So these girls are, are very proud of being able to, to wear that honor and to wear that badge and to have someone like Ella that they can kind of have perspective for and to humble themselves a little bit to say, you know, this is this is my world, but for Ella, um, things that she experiences and has to go through on a daily basis. It kind of brings it all into perspective. You'll see the purple press-on tattoos on the back of the Eastern gymnast's necks as well. Those are the ribbons for Ella and uh, her epilepsy as well. So you're going to look at the beam lineup, led off by the senior Megan Holtgren. Charlotte Reynolds, who had her debut in a counted event on bars, will exhibition here on beam. Rondo and Dobronix, the all-arounders, in the third spot and the inter spot, respectively. Megan just started her mount with what's called a pressed handstand. 
it looks pretty simple, but it is one of the most difficult things that, that you can do to start on your beam rotation here. It takes a lot of strength and stability and shoulder shoulder strength there to get all the way up to Hansen and hold it. And not have any wobbles through that. She has completed her full turn, which is a required element for every beam routine. It often becomes kind of a nemesis for a lot of gymnasts where it's something you've done since you were first entering into the sport of gymnastics. But because of that, it's something that oftentimes gets overlooked and can do simple bobbles on. And she did a zero part roll into a layout full dismount. Got the stick there for her dismount. That was a great lead off machine for Eastern. This is where Katie Minnesota wants to see her team thrive. She says beam is their best event. They just haven't shown it yet. Yes, and beam is the most difficult event to keep composure on. It's the one that is the most nerve-wracking for everyone. And so if you can hit six or six on beam, that's a good day. Matty McDonald is in the leadoff spot on four for Ball State. Historically, this has been Ball State's bread and butter. They are known for their performance quality on floor. And still a pipe to start out for opening pass here. The middle pass is new for her. So for us to press, it's typically three tumbling passes and dance elements in between. It's a minute and a half of solid movement the whole way through. So the gymnasts are required to do their tumbling along with what we call showing the routine off. So you have to make it look pretty and effortless as you're doing the difficult skills and it is not easy. Take a look at the vault. Look at the consistency. Top to bottom. They had a great rotation on vault today. That'll be their best vault score of the season. Scott Wilson, their assistant, you'll see him in the red shirt there. He said they thought their scores were a little lower than they should have been their first two weeks. A little redemption here tonight. Final pass. Nice double tuck dismount for her. The height for Maddie McDonald, and she is a tiny gymnast. Gets off the floor. Yes, she is. Now it's nice to see she open with a double a double salto pass and close with a double salto pass. Not many gymnasts can do that where they have both two difficult passes, first and last, like that. Back to being Brie Price for the first time. And there's a bunch of unique movements on the beam for Eastern Michigan. We saw uh, a sheep jump for Megan Holtgren, which is a difficult movement. You're going to see an illusion here from Brie Price. Nice connection there on her series. She has a kick over front to a backhand spring. Those two elements together are difficult to get what we call the connection between the two. You have to have consistent movement from one skill to the next. Because one moves forward, the next moves backwards. There's that illusion. And she stays in. She had a slight wobble there. Speaking of that connection again, because she moved forward and then backwards, her arms have to be consistently moving. So it's difficult to keep everything all in a straight line where she doesn't have to break her connection at all. There's a degree of risk for Eastern when it comes to the beam routines, and that plays back into Katie saying this is their strength. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. These are a good, great two starts for them here. It's definitely what Kate's been looking for from her beam lineup. Hopefully they can keep that rolling. And still with their two all-arounders to go. So that concludes Brie Price's night. As we head back to floor, and Ball State's Rachel Benoit. teammates from the side, they have cheers that, that pertain to different movements in our floor routine. That was pretty fun. There will be a BSU at some point yelled out somewhere in everyone's routine. Nice high, little pipe for her. She'd have to take a significant step backwards, but she did stay inbound. That mat that was used on the floor is okay to use. It does not give, it, give her deduction of any sort. As long as the lines are applied to the mat, it's okay to pull on the floor, and they just moved it when she was finished. Just like Maddie McDonald, middle pass is new here for Rachel Bonoy. So each routine is required to have what we call it two Ooh, salto stepped pass. Stepped out of bounds. Two out of bounds, that's not good deduction for that. Two salto mean that you have to flip twice in a row with one another. So that
that middle pack, the vice for her two salt to catch it in one and a half to a punch run tuck. Stick on her third pass and a tough routine with the step out of balance and the same on the first pass, but she ends it on a good note. Yes, she did. Again, that's quite that's quite a good amount of endurance there to be able to finish with that double salto, uh, that double tuck that she had in her third pass. Pressure on now though, because if you're ball state, that's the one you want to drop. Absolutely. She didn't have a fall, but here comes the step out of bounds. Unfortunately, both feet did actually go out there. So she will get the significant deduction for that middle pass. And like Joel said, that is a new pass for her, so she's probably working out some of the kinks in it. Potential hot back up on the beam as well, so her night is not done. That will not be the last note that she has to take back on the bus ride to Muncie. Looks like there's a discrepancy in start value. Here for Eastern. Three's routine looks like one judge did not give her that 10 start value. The illusion that she does is bonus for her. And again, like I was mentioning, the connection between her series with the forward front tuck into the backhand spring. One judge may have thought she had too much of a pause between, where one could have given her the connection. So they're discussing it together at the moment. But again, that does lead to kind of that waiting factor for Emily to come here. Kenny Minnesota keeping her loose. I like the dance moves. It's good that you get coach moment. Absolutely. Katie's good at that. She likes to keep her girls lighthearted and having fun. Helps you do better gymnastics when you're just relaxed and enjoying it. Dobronix is a regionals gymnast from a year ago. She went as an individual. Said she wants to go back as a team. Been there as a team. Easter went back to back seasons in 16 and 17. Just said the vibe is different. You want those teammates on the floor cheering with you. So that's the motivation for Easter Michigan is to get back to that MAC championship level here in 2019. Show well when she went to regionals individually. She hit all four routines. That was a big confidence boost for her. To see her compete on a floor with national ranked teams, that's a big confidence boost for you. Difficult theme routine upcoming for Triple Flight Series. Throw a pipe jump at us over the next 90 seconds here as well. So Easter has a couple of different routines, a few of them I think that have triple series. So there's two backhand springs in a row to a layout step out. Light bobble long match, kind of like against herself. Was able to save it. But again, that's not a requirement for her to do three series in a row. Two elements is sufficient for, for the series on the beauty. But she opts to do a third. And that pipe skill that Joel had mentioned, it's not a very common skill to be seen because it's difficult to get both legs up in the air and that it should be parallel to the floor at the height of your jump. And a nice stick this amount though on her run off to one and a half. This might turn into the night that Eastern Michigan has wanted to see on beam all season long. Three routines in, and three routines to feel good about. That's not a bad student assistant coach to have there either. A big embrace from Lacey Rubin, who's a regionals competitor on that apparatus as well. Helps keep those beam bloodlines going after right. Eastern Michigan was so good on the beat in the last couple of seasons. Here's Nychik on floor. You mentioned at the opening that the gymnasts can be kind of more twisting type gymnasts or more powerful type gymnasts. So she, as we just saw, is more efficient at twisting. She did a front double fold to a punch front tuck. That does give her connection bonus as well as suffice for the two salter requirement in the routines. And 
Now comes her double tuck. If I caught that with her toes a little bit and saved she it. She did. She was a little bit short on that, but she was able to pull it around. She just stuck with it. Gave to get legs underneath herself to be able to catch without having to step forward. You're seeing her come out of her shell a little bit on the floor as well, because the first two events, she just had this very full hum. Demure. Yes. That's what this event can do, though. You bring that person out. Absolutely. And her teammates are all on the sidelines with her there. Oftentimes you'll see your teammates doing the routine as she goes, also, as the gymnast is performing. The teammates typically know pretty much the whole routine, just because you see it every day with each other. The last pass is a front rooney, so it's a front with a one and a half twist. She took a step backwards, but on floor, Joel had mentioned it's not a deduction to have a controlled step. That's okay, that's what we call a lunge. So nice routine there. This is going to be very interesting from a head-to-head -head standpoint. That it is. We were separated by less than two tenths over the first two rotations. And that's the first pickup on beam here for Eastern Michigan. The freshman Chin and Gregory, who started gymnastics at her high school, J.P. Stevens in New Jersey. That is not very common. Most students when you it through a club program it started at a very young age. So a freshman for her to be able to come into the sport and then come into college as well with as much skill as she had. Good fight on that series for her. That's a pretty skill there. Again, not a requirement, but one of those unique skills that Eastern is doing just to add some flair to the routine. And on her dismount, it's about hands from one and a half. Slight hop behind her. Nice form and the one and a half twist though. So a little more pressure on the gymnast yet to come for Eastern with that fall they just suffered. See the score flash up for Nychik. Nine, six, two, five for Ball State on floor. And Sydney Finky, who was a late add on vault, Threw up a 9.75. One of the very few Indianapolis or Indiana products on this Ball State team. They have done a phenomenal job to recruit the globe. 12 different states are represented on this Ball State roster. Yes, and that's impressive. Historically, Ball, Ball State has normally had gymnasts from kind of a closer region, regionalized area from the, where their college is located. So, coaching staff has done a great job to pull in gymnasts from a lot of different areas and got some excitement with their program. And the only program in the state of Indiana. So they've got that going for them from a recruiting standpoint. And they did win the recruiting battle for Sid Finke against Eastern Michigan. He is just a bundle of joy and all muscle. Her strength coaches have called her a muscle hamster in the past. And you'll see why. She's a very compact gymnast. Lots of power in this lake. She opened it with that front double full to a punch front. Just like night check before her. So each of us gets to pick the music that they perform to. Typically the routines are different every year. But you get to see the personality of the gymnast come out on floor. Kind of see what kind of dance style they they prefer. That's hard to find too, because it has to be instrumental old. You gotta right. dig a little bit to find. Or you've gotta hear a song and go, I wonder what this would sound like without words. Yes, yeah, some songs are better than others of those. We, there have been some attempts at trying a song from the radio that just does not work with the floor team music. Nice little pipe to finish your routine here. Great endurance from Ball State today. You can see the energy that comes out when you know that that just went well. Let's take a look at the 12 states for Ball State. You try to find a pattern. There's a lot of region eights, which is where assistant coach Scott Wilson comes from. A bunch of Florida, North Carolina. Doesn't matter where they come from, it just matters that they come together. 
and back on beam for the freshman Caitlin Sattler. You can see the triple series again. She also has the pike jump full. I don't believe they'll give her the full value of that pike jump. She's a little bit shy of reaching that parallel shape with her body there, from legs to the floor. Solid though throughout the team here. This mount is a double full. Very minute movement of that right foot, but beautiful routine for her. That was a good comeback after the fall prior. Got the Eagles back on track. And like we mentioned, with the step out of bounds for Benoit on Ball State side, when there's a fall, do you think about that as a gymnast? There's more pressure, or does that just make it worse? You just have to go do it. I hope it's to not think about it. Unfortunately, that, that oftentimes does creep into your mind, though. And there's definitely a lot more pressure if you've had a fall prior to know that if you fall again, then your, your fall is going to count for this total. Well, if Sydney Finky is a ball of energy for Ball State, I don't know what you call Sandra Elsadek. Because she just comes out on fire. Um, absolutely, she does. Nice high, little high to start. Good controlled landing for her. A nice big pass there. Show us the stash. You get the first twisting in the second salto versus in the first. Let me see from the prior piece. I'm so sorry. Uh, for the noise outside, I live in an apartment complex, and sometimes they use the roller outside. So make sure you're in the right room. Don't cook in the living room. Cook in the kitchen. Be in the right space when you're out there. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. There's no sense in thinking about another event when you're out there when I'm ready. You have to let the others go. Stay present. Stay focused on the task at hand. One of the tough things about gymnastics is to not get ahead of yourself as well. So, especially on me. If you know you have a big skill that you're concerned about or maybe typically have some struggle with, it's hard to leave that alone until you get to the skill. You have to think into your head early and can cause difficulties on other things. Young America, Minnesota. With just four inches of ground for Yeah. Yes. That's where around. that gymnast is from. Moving into this triple series. Two back hamstrings to a layout step out. Solid, good for her. She second guessed herself a little bit, but was able to pull it back. Required full turn there. On bouncing this year, something new they added to the code of points that the judges are looking for is that the gymnasts may not stand still for longer than what they consider to be two seconds. I asked Coach Katie Minnesota about that before the started here and she actually said you're allowed one second if they say two in their heads if they get to the number two then they can take one tenth deduction if they get all the way through to the number three it'll be up to a two tenth deduction so that made a big difference on their scores this season it's something that you don't really see when you're watching the routine but that's being deducted for kind of on the on the sidelines and something else if you're a gymnast something else in your head. Absolutely. Trying to keep a clear mind up on the beam. Absolutely. It's pretty common before a, a major skill too to take a breather to kind of reframe your, your train of thought. So when that breather breather second is not loud, that adds a whole other element to the routine. Anchor spot for Ball State belongs to the senior, Caitlin Benzioni. And just like those before her, it's all about performance for Ball State on the floor. Caitlin is training, and I think it's opening tonight with her E skills, the full end. There we go. She did it. That was the best one she's done this evening. Good for her. So that had a full twist in the first flip, and she finished it with the flip in the tough position. Come back, comes back with a more simplistic pass, but it does suffice for the two salter requirement in the routine. <laughs> Facial expression is key. You can see that almost kind of sass on her face. Judges look for that. They do, absolutely. And the more you can draw the judges in, draw the crowd in that's watching you, the higher the score typically, even though it shouldn't necessarily factor in, but it does. It's all a performance. If they figure out it's fun. Absolutely. Fun. Absolutely. Last 
last pass here. She closes the double back. Nice finish for her. That was a unique little back tuck to her belly. Nice rotation for Ball State there. That's a little nail and anchor spot. Anchor Benzioni. How far she has come was a rock star freshman for Ball State. Left off the match championship roster. She watched it from the stands in her home gym and has come all the way back as a senior to just be rock solid. Yeah, the Eagles are going to have to fall, count and fall on me. Actually, this is about oh, exhibition. Yeah, right. so, oh, this is exhibition. Let's go three students and will not count for their team to roll. Well, maybe they won't have to count and fall on me. But we're still trying to get that experience here for Charlotte. Get a routine under her belt that in front of the crowd, in front of the pressure situation with the Dillies. Who's had a great night. First career counted event on bars. I had to guess she had some, some excited jitters after that bar routine too. So. Can I go back and do it again? Yeah. I want to do it again. I don't want to leave. She fell again. Ariel that she just had to mistake on there again. Yeah. Have learned from it and have a have a hit the next time. We do have an exhibition on floor for Ball State, and that is the freshman Stephanie Schweiker. We have scores in as well on the floor. And you can see the totals. With Ball State still an edge in front, but with some work to do on the floor. Eastern Michigan will flip spot. Eastern will have the advantage in that regard for sure being the finish on the floor. That's always a less nerve-wracking spot to close the meet versus having to do the back of the net. And with the 9-8 filed for Caitlin Benzioni, look at that. 145-1. Almost five tenths lead for Ball State. And it sets them up really nicely for a season high score. Clicked 194 yet this year. Take the 9725. Holmgren leads you off south. And Rondo, really good spot in the acre chair. But Ball State with a commanding lead as we go into rotation four. Some work to do on the floor, but that's where the home team wants to finish things off. Eastern Let's Michigan, go Eagles. That's one of its best beat results of the season. Got some of them. Final uh, event. We ain't afraid of danger. No. Ah. It is concerned. Uh, that is still something that Ball State has a little bit of a grapple on. Now this is what Eastern Michigan is trying to make up for. Still early in the season. You got to look at Lacey Rubin who is still around as a student assistant. <laughs> Kemba Valentin has the first All-American in school history. That's a big loss. Keelan Schwartz, someone that could have done all around for you on any given night. 
that's a lot to try to replace, and that's where it comes back to the freshmen and lineups we've talked about. It is absolutely. The freshmen have done a good job filling those shoes. It's always hard when you have a large class. As coming in as freshmen, you know that at some point that large class is going to leave as seniors. So those seniors are pretty impactful on the program overall. So they'll have some. They'll have some work to do to get that filled back in, but they'll they'll be able to get there. If you're curious, by the way, Lisa Rubin is not rude at checking text messages during the week. Uh, she, as a student, was in charge of playing music on floor, and as a student manager, student assistant, she is still in charge of playing music on the floor. She continues that role. Huh. And such as technology goes, hit the iPhone. iPhone. I'm old. Used to be on cassette tapes. Trying to play music and plug music, and that would help. Hit the record player. You just have to keep repeating the skill when it gets stuck. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's two of them. Perfect. What if they spoke to one another before coming to make sure they were each wearing it? You're wearing your romper? I'm wearing my romper. Here's the green and the white one. That's right. Eastern Michigan floor lineup starts with Sattler. We will see an exhibition. Rondo and Dobronix are the two all arounders. They will finish in the anchor spot. So we'll get another look at Sierra Gresham, who we last saw on Bolts, one of their power gymnasts here in Eastern Michigan. Beam for Ball State. Nigel the freshman leads off. Arden is, is doing an well. exhibition. Jordan Penny. A sophomore. Is the fifth year grad student in the anchor chair. <laughs> Nijic comes from such a heralded program. She's been a level 10 gymnast for the longest of anyone on Ball State Club since she was in sixth grade. From her club down in Fort Myers, Florida, she was part of a group that sent a ton of gymnasts to college that includes Lexi Graber, who won the Tuscaloosa Regional last year in Alabama. They called her rookie because she was the youngest of them, so they pal around with us again, we'll show you the ropes. The benefit of that for her, that is early to be level 10 gymnast, but the benefit for her is that she's been doing most of these skills that she'll be competing tonight for a very long time. So that adds to the confidence factor, that adds to the ease of how she can complete the skill. Starts with the handspring layout over there. Beautifully done. She looks confident. The Taylor Swift music is coincidental, but it does kind of work to the routine at the moment. Oftentimes, the gymnasts will, in a meet setting, choose the music they want to have played in the loudspeaker. And I did not pay attention during Eastern to know if that's what's going on tonight, but we'll see if it changes the routine. If so, that's likely what's happening. A small step that one and a half, but beautiful routine to lead off. Lead off gymnast sets the tone for the entire rotation, so especially on beam, that lead off position is key. Caitlin Sattler trying to bounce back from a fall on B. Kate Minnesota called her a twister. How do we see that and what we're about to witness? Right she starts with a two and a half twist to a punch front. So both the gymnasts that were being twisters, they were doing front tumbling twisting. Uh, so Caitlin did a back tumbling pass, but still you see that that body line is nice and long and lean. That tight position bodes well for the twisting skills. So she got her bonus connection for that two and a half plus the two salto in one pass there. And more twisting. Now she did a front double pull. Kind of a fun little front handspring to the Position. Again, the personality there. Each gymnast is required to sit in some capacity on the floor during the routine. They may not remain on their feet the entire time. She finishes with more twisting. A handspring of Ruby, which is a one and a half twist. 
minus 13, good lead off for Eastern. Back on beam at Sandra Elsedek. Competed all around her very first weekend of college. Did not last week and was slated to today but was a late scratch on ball. Third and final routine. And Sandra is somebody that when she was younger in gymnastics, 12 years old, had a fall, actually wound up breaking her jaw, required a three hour surgery, and it actually happened on April 1st. And it got to the point where when they called her parents to say Sandra broke her jaw, they said it's April 1st. Really? Yes, really. The orthodontist actually advised her to quit gymnastics. But stuck with it. And it worked out. Good thing she did not take the advice of the She has great teeth though, so he does good work. So Sandra did some disconnection there between her leak pad. So she had a pause, she backed up, and she stepped forward again and added the secondary jump to connect the two together. That is a requirement to have two leaps connected to one another. So because she missed connection from the first, she wisely regrouped herself and then did two leaps together. Get another one there. And you can make those adjustments on the fly. Absolutely, you can. And a lot of times those are the things that are practiced, where if you're at during training, if you miss connection, they'll practice doing so, where you kind of create it on the fly or figure out what else you could do, kind of have a backup plan that already semi pre planned in your head, just for a just in case scenario. Routine A and routine. That's right. One A. Second on the floor is Allie Smith. Saw her drop to the anchor spot on vault because of her ten was start value. It's a drop. She went from five to six, but bolted up. It's really a bump. Yeah. Starts with the front back handspring double tuck. Right by the crowd there. Four was a 9.775 to start Eastern off on the other end of the gym. Against her layout, she had a lot of momentum, kind of backward momentum carrying her. She tried to take a couple steps backwards on the beam, but wasn't able to keep her center of balance there and ended up off to the side. And a real quick hop back up to the beam. She they did give you time. You are allowed 30 seconds to remount the apparatus. Some gymnasts like to take that time, others just like to keep moving. She does a punch front, which is not a typical skill you see in college gymnastic punch these days. It's nice to see the risk being taken. Just a little bit off there. She's slightly clustered. Didn't quite get the connection, so she had to add that feet jump is what we call it, just kind of switching the feet before her leap. And the one and a half dismount. 
she got through it, she'll hope to improve on that next next routine that she does next weekend. Finally, Smith's nine six seven five pop off. As we head back and forth with Shannon Gregory, the freshman from New Jersey. And she had the full in. She was low finishing it. She didn't quite get the lift she needed to start. She got a little bit ahead of herself. Kind of tried to rush that twist. But good to see her open with an E level skill there. Katie Minnesota said they're working on her presentation a little bit. As a freshman, it's definitely a different feel when you're doing your routine in, in the college world. So it's so much more based upon presentation and getting your eyes off the floor, making con eye contact with the crowd and the judges, like we mentioned before. So there's a comfort factor that not everyone is quite ready to do when you first come to college. It goes back to there. Like, even if you're thinking about it and squeezing it to death in your mind, it looks like you're having fun. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Don't think about these incredibly difficult skills that you're getting ready to perform. You have to be smiling. You have to be looking at someone else. You can make it seem like you're having to be intensely focused right here. Nice double tuck to finish. Good routine for her. Nice to see the difficulty. Dance band too. The way you play with the music at the very end of it. Less gymnastic -y, more dancey, but that goes back to the showmanship aspect of it. Absolutely, it does. Here's Rachel Benoit. Trying to get regrouped here after the fall. This is a critical routine for Ball State to have a hit, kind of try to get back on track. Triple flight for her. So she did a back handspring. Her second back handspring actually was only done with one arm. It happened quickly, so you may not have caught that that, was, that she had done that, but adds some uniqueness and some extra difficulty to the skill there. To be able to make up some points on her dismount. Nicely pass. is a beautiful duck tuck. She hit it cold. Great stick for her. She did not play it safe on that dismount. She's probably a little bit frustrated by the fall she had earlier, so she went went for it and it it worked. She stuck it cold. You gotta get that, you gotta get that speed built up. It looks Absolutely. simple. It's not simple. It is not. And there's not much room to run. So you have to generate a lot of power and not much distance. Sierra Gresham here on floor for Easter. Back after a year off last season, did not compete with a knee injury. Little wink there. She's shown her personality already before she can get started. Nice high double pipe. Open. She's still fairly new back to this. So we end of November, early December, did she get back full go on the floor and a new routine for her? So this is six weeks in the making for Sierra Gresham. She's had fun with it. It makes a difference when you're doing choreography that you really enjoy. It shows. Punch front layout, front pull. Two salto pass, gets her bonus as well. Playing with the crowd a little bit here. Her teammates in front of her as well. Sitting on that is great, because she will follow you around the floor. She did. Here. The rest of her team is on the whole opposite side of the floor. And she went around so she could be there for that one particular spot. She's out here to kind of take her mind off things and just have fun. Have her teammate support there. Last pass is a double tuck. She pulled it around nicely. Good routine there for Sierra. Good to see her back after that injury. That's four in the books for Eastern Michigan on floor. 
Well, they've had back-to-back -back falls, so they really need a hit routine here. And this is a tough spot for Lord Volpe, the freshman, who has been waiting and waiting and waiting. This is her first event here tonight. This would be the worst. I had mentioned this earlier in the in the airing that having to wait until the last rotation, especially that last rotation being balance beam. She hit a solid like hamstring layout that was into her. Maybe she thrives on that extra time in between. It's her lead pass, which leads to a split jump. If you look for that split jump, you hit 180 degrees. Typically for our eyes to register that it's a full split, they actually have to go a little bit beyond that 180, which is difficult to do. Some extra dance bonus there. This one is an aerial to a full and stuck. Great routine to get Ball State back on track. And that's why the only thing that she does is compete at the back end of the last event. <laughs> at least on the road. Good for her. She took her opportunity that she had and made it count. Now Jenna Rondo. With a double tuck. A little bit short. She got a little anxious to finish the the pad, so she opened a little bit early, left her chest down. Big smile on her face though, she didn't let that bother her. up on the bottom for Lord Volpe on Good beam. Lord. That was a beautiful routine. That was well deserved. That's nice a career high for Lord Volpe. And that okay. sets the table for Jordan Penny, the fifth year grad student. She was a senior last year, participated in senior day, and got her freshman year back because of an injury. Coaches actually encouraged her to go look at other grad programs. Make sure this is the best place and best decision for you before you come back. Think about the academic side of it first. And wound up back at Ball State with her final year of gymnastics. Which is no little thing as a coaching staff. Obviously they, they would welcome her and would love to have her back, but just make sure that she was making the right decision, not based upon gymnastics, but what's best for her career and her education. Oh, and huge. Graduated of five member senior class, she is major for leadership on this team. It's one of the things where begrudgingly you say, make sure this is the right thing for you, but it's the right thing to right say. But she it, was. The it was. It was the right, right move all around for her. Great to finish the rotation out for them with a hit routine. but Emily Dobronix will close us out here tonight. Now the two balls on being from Ball State have opened the door yes, for Eastern yes. Michigan to potentially win this thing. Beautiful double pipe for her. A nice toe point throughout the field as well. It's kind of one of those finesse moments where a lot of times your pointed toes are kind of the last thing you're thinking about in the entire level of skill, so she holds that form all the way through. Touch up layout, touch up full. She's with her dance elements 
here right in front of the TV. You don't see that often. Side straddle full, the dance bonus there. Curl to her seated position. Just for fun. Last pass for her to the double tuck. She had a nice lift to start that rotation. Had plenty of height. to come back after their balance beam. And we'll see what the score adds up to. Ball State, we saw Jordan Penny's numbers flash up, will finish. They had a shot with a great beam run to get to 194 for the first time. They will fall short of 193 by a 10. This is an exhibition by Arden Hudson. Arden gives us a nice long line. She has more height than a typical gymnast, but it makes her beautiful gymnastics. Thought we might see her on the beam to count here tonight. Ball State kind of has a mix for the two and three spots. So depending on what happens here, she might wind up in it. That's absolutely right. This is also a proving point for a gymnast. You know, you put in that exhibition spot, you can perform better than maybe someone else that had been in the lineup. You may get a shot the next weekend. She had a very nice aerial but handspring for her series. I mean, kind of a unique connection that she had there. A long pause there before her dismount. Again, that's probably longer than that one second on that one. So maybe the Dutch a little bit for that, but nice routine. Good stick on that dismount. And a poor exhibition for Eastern Michigan as well with Carly Kosinovich. It's our exhibition of vaults as well, the two power events. Dobronic score pop up there, and Eastern Michigan comes from behind big time. They did absolutely, and they got across that 194 landmark. Double pipe to start. Nice high. Also for her. Winds up as a resounding floor routine for Eastern Michigan. Yes, it did. We were down a half a point. Don't they get to it? Five tenths is five tenths, but still. Going, going to be for the last rotation, which is going to floor for the bottom. last rotation definitely puts you at a, a disadvantage. You have to be a pretty strong minded team to be able to pull out a win finishing on balance beam. Nice presentation here. But 194, 125 for Eastern Michigan will be their final score. And just a hair below what they put up a week ago when they went on the road to take on Northern Illinois and Western Michigan into Cal. But a good spot for them if you're Ball State meantime, you wind up with the 1929, which is their low through three meets this season. We'll wrap it all up when we come on back. It's a win for Eastern Michigan to start off that play. Black Panther, ready PG-13. I, I think so as well, and they may have just nailed her on that, that second waiting too long pause before her element. They may have gotten her every time on that. How about Dobronics? A 9.85 on the floor. 9.9 is her career high. 
and then just solid across the board. Eastern Michigan, there was a pretty dead even split across floor. Eastern Michigan was at the top, Ball State got beat on floor, it got flipped on vaults. It kind of wound up in terms of a mixed bag of what happened on bars and beam, and it was enough for Eastern Michigan to wind up with the victory. Sarah Sageman, Joel Gadek, glad to have you back along with us. Good showing for the Eagles, you have to feel good. It was, yes, they showed a little bit on, on beam, but otherwise they had a solid meet. Um, their, their goal is always 24 for 24, as, as all teams are. Um, they didn't quite get that tonight, but they still had a strong showing. Kenny Minnesota, they were good everywhere but beam where they struggled a little bit. We'll see if that doesn't stick in her craw, because I know that was the I one thing they will. she said. Yeah. She's kind of like being great. queen herself. So. Yeah, you feel like you're good in one spot, and it just hasn't translated yeah. yet. But it also sets the table for how good this Eastern Michigan team can be. Absolutely. If they can get being put together, um, get those solid routines in like they know they can do, they can definitely crest the, the mid 194s, get close to that 195 range. So let's take a look at how this thing played out from the beginning. It was Eastern Michigan starting on bars, Ball State starting on ball. We'll flip that. It was the, uh, the other way around, but here is Eastern Michigan with that on debt start in the leadoff chair. That kind of set a good tone. Yes, it did. That was a nice stick. And the beam we talked about for Eastern Michigan, which began really well. Their first three yes, routines it did. Yes, it did. were great. All State on the floor, something that they are so much known for as a program. Sydney Finke. Lots of personality there in that routine. That was a fun one. Happy shake for Sid Finke. As we take a look at our individual event winner, Sierra Gresham, on vault. She won vault, followed by the six for Ball State. And then Eastern Michigan behind her bars, Courtney Beasel. It's the only thing she does. That is why with the 985. Jordan Penny wins on beam. That's her second event win of the season. She also has a bar title under her belt. And we mentioned Emily Dobronix already doing um, near career high work on the four event today. All around, you see Dobronix with a 48.925 after she put forward um, a 39 last week out. Back to back good all around performances from Emily Dobronix. So Eastern Michigan winds up with the victory. 194, 125 for Ball State's 192. The Cardinals versus the Eagles. Gymnastics. For Sarah Sageman and the rest of our crew, my name is Joel Gannett. To watch a replay of this and other events on our ESPN family of networks, head to watch ESPN or download the ESPN app. In Eastern Michigan, W. Here That's where I got this meet from, the ESPN app. See, now it goes back to all the meats that are available. Don't forget to hit the big red button and subscribe if you haven't already. And there's a whole lot more gymnastics meats coming. See that NC State versus LSU? I can't uh, stream that. Peace out, YouTube.